Hi, welcome to Books with Lexi. In this video, I'm going to be reading documentary horror. I think this is a really fun gimmick that can be added to horror books and it adds a really interesting investigation element on top of the horror. I haven't read many documentary horror books, but I really like them so I wanted to explore more. So in this video, I am going to be reading episode 13 by Craig DeLuey, Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez, and The Lost Village by Camilla Sten. I'm going to be starting with episode 13, so let's get into the vlog. I am a third of the way into episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. This one is so interesting. This one has been so popular recently, and it's also my book club pick, so I'm glad I picked one that people are really interested in. So we are following a film crew. They film a TV show. I think they started out on YouTube and then moved to TV, and we are getting the written transcript of episode 13. I think maybe it was never aired. So this is supposed to be a like neutral approach to the story because everybody has like so many opinions and everything that is documented about the famous episode 13 is like skewed towards people's opinions or whatever. So this is supposed to be like straight facts of the story. Um, it starts off with an editor's note that is pretty much saying that, giving a little bit of backstory, and then we go into different types of mixed media. So the first page is from the Fade to Black website. The TV show is called Fade to Black. So episode 13 is from Fade to Black, so we get, an, so we get that from the website. Um, they are in the foundation house, so we are getting things happening in there, so we get um, a blog from Fade to Black, a television interview from That's Entertainment magazine. We also get transcripts from filming. We get emails between different people. Um, we get text messages between one of the investigators and her sister, emails between other people, journal entries, and then it is split into different days during episode 13. Um, we also get transcripts from the episode itself. So I just got to day three, which is I think pretty much exactly the third. And while I've been enjoying it because I do like ghost hunting type things, one of my favorite things on YouTube to watch is um, Shane and Ryan. They did BuzzFeed Unsolved. Now they have their own thing, but like things like that. So there's been a lot of setup and talk about the investigation. And I enjoy that because that's just like something that I like outside of reading, but it just started to pick up with the investigation itself. The audiobook, if you listen to audiobooks, this is 100% worth it. There's sound effects. Whenever the sisters are texting, you get background stuff. So there's background noise to kind of signify that it is a different kind of media. Um, so things happening in the background, like shuffling and stuff. And then whenever we're getting the transcript from the show, if someone like kick something, you hear that noise. If someone is singing, you hear that. If a door closes, you hear that. You hear footsteps. So like the production of this is absolutely incredible. Um, by far one of the best audiobooks with the production that I've ever listened to. It is full cast, so all of the characters have their own voice, and I think it is done incredibly well. I will say that I want the story to pick up a little more, um, which it is just now starting to. I really cannot wait to see how this goes, because I've heard a few things, like I haven't heard any spoilers, but um, I think this gets really weird. I'm into weird, I'm into this book, and I cannot wait to continue. I am two thirds into episode 13 and I really don't know how I'm feeling about this still. It's interesting because this is like a script. I don't even know how to talk about this because the way this is written, it's like a lot of the story is the way it is told and the way it's written. Um, we are getting so many different perspectives of all of the different characters. And it's not like it's a scary book. The things that are happening, like the only times I've been scared are whenever there's a background noise in the audiobook and I'm not expecting it and it makes me jump. But like the book itself is not scary and it's kind of reminding me of the way that House of Leaves is horror. And I do think this is kind of like, and what is the word, homage to that a little bit. 
Um, it has a lot of similar vibes, but like doesn't have the most annoying, awful character that I could think of right now. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not attached to any of these characters. And I think that maybe if I was, I would be a little more into this, but I'm still really liking it. Like it's feeling like it's going to be four stars at this point, but a lot of this book is the gimmick and the audio book. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how to talk about this book, but I'm liking it, but it's like very different than like a typical haunted house book. I have finished episode 13. It's actually been a couple days since I finished this. Um, I will have the Pyramid Book Club discussion linked in the description if you want more of my thoughts on here, but um, I'm going to give this four stars solely for the audiobook. It's three stars for the book itself, and then the fourth star is because I think the audiobook was incredibly well done. Between the full cast and the sound effects and everything, like it really added to the experience. I do think that the audiobook did make things a little cheesy at times. Um, like I was never scared while reading this book. This does take like this twist and it also takes a lot of inspiration from House of Leaves. And like while reading it, I was like, well, that's just the same thing as this book. So I didn't love that. Um, I think that I needed a lot more atmosphere in here to enjoy it. I really liked the direction it ended with, but I needed more of that. I think the middle was just really slow for me, so I wish that the ending would have been spread out more, and then it probably would have been a solid four for the story and then possibly five for the audiobook. Yeah, I don't think this was scary. I didn't love any of the characters. I thought it was a fun concept, and at first I was really liking the paranormal investigation, like, history not history like just like setting things up and like talking about how things work but it just kind of was dragging for me after a little bit so I'm really really bummed about this one because honestly with other people's reactions I expected this to be a new all-time favorite and sadly it is not but that's okay we still have other ones that could work even better for me so I'm going to move on. Okay, so I finished episode 13 and that one was very much focused on this documentary. So now I'm moving to something that for sure has a documentary like movie film situation in it, but there are more perspectives and not everyone is in that perspective. So it's a little break from the extreme like technical aspect of things like this. I guess I should tell you what I'm reading, right? I am reading Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. I am currently 34% into this. I don't have a copy. I'm reading it on my Kindle, but I actually lost my Kindle. So <laughs> I was going to show you the cover with that. Um, so I guess I'll have to figure out how to put it in here since I'm on new editing software. So if I didn't figure it out, so sorry. But this is on Kindle Unlimited and we are following some different perspectives and by some I mean there's actually a lot and it's a little confusing because like I'm struggling to remember some of their names anyway so we are following I don't know their names but it's a woman and a man and they're not a couple but the one started off being like a vlogger and then was approached by this older guy who is a paranormal investigator and now they have a show on YouTube that they do and they heard about this thing that they think might be paranormal and they're going to investigate it and they are planning on making a movie out of it. Let me back up. So we start the very beginning of this novel with a couple who is going to this cabin. It is the most secluded cabin in Pennsylvania and they're going there to like have a weekend to repair their marriage and they get there and almost immediately the man dies and then we see the woman being taken off and then we go into the present so that was a little bit in the past I think it was like a year or two ago and then we are following this guy who's in college and his friend has just invited him to a cabin party we know it is the same cabin well we're assuming but like they don't know about this whole situation because the guy that owns it is keeping it a secret on purpose because he still wants to be able to rent it out and we find that out um, whenever the documentary crew goes to talk to him to get information, but they still don't know that it's like the cabin that is like referenced as Camp Slaughter by like the locals. And they go and they talk to this local and he's like, oh yeah, Camp Slaughter, like 
it might be paranormal, but probably a cannibal. And like, that's literally in the synopsis, but like, I didn't read it. And I was like, ooh, we're reading a cannibal book. So we're getting a bunch of different perspectives. It's a little bit confusing because like the college aged, college, college aged guy invited this girl to go to the party because he likes her. And then we get a chapter from her perspective and it's a lot. And I'm like, I struggle with names. So who are you? But once I get like into it, I'm a little bit better and I can't tell if the problem is me or some of the characters aren't like fully distinguished yet. I'm at the point where I'm pretty sure I know who everybody is unless they add <laughs> more people, which is possible because we we're coming up on this party and I hope that we don't get any more perspectives because it's just a little confusing at times. So where I am right now, this party that is going to happen in the cabin, like they are just about to leave. So there's that and then the documentary crew, the two of them, they are like really starting to find out some more information. So that's the setup and where I am. This is a fairly short book, but since I'm only reading it on Kindle, I think I'm also going to start my next book because I have some like laundry and boring adult stuff that I need to do. It's been really nice out and I'm in the mood to like clean everything I own, which I don't typically do. Listen, I'm not, I'm not the best at that. So whenever I'm actually feeling like doing laundry and like getting rid of a bunch of clothes that I don't wear and like deep cleaning things, I have to take advantage of it. So I'm also going to be starting The Lost Village. I'm almost positive that I should not like confuse these two in my brain. I'm really good at keeping plots separate, um, especially if they're not super similar. Like I wouldn't want to read another cannibal slasher right now, but even though this has the documentary thing, I feel like it's going to be very um, distinct. But anyway, I have the audiobook for this and this one's more of a thriller I really need to take this sticker off so maybe I will do that during this video I'm excited that this video worked out that I had a new release and then one from KU that I've been wanting to read for a long time and then one I've had on my shelves for a while so to wrap this up I'm really liking Camp Slaughter I'm reading it very quickly whenever I am able to sit down and read physically while I'm enjoying it like the writing is not the best thing I've ever read but it's not taking me out of the story at all and hopefully the characters calm down just a little bit with like being too many other than that I'm really liking it it's feeling like four stars depending on how it continues going because like the writing doesn't really impact my enjoyment unless it makes it to the point where it's unreadable I am going to start this maybe talk to you about this maybe talk to you about camp slaughter who knows this is a little chaotic but like life you know I swear I just saw a cat like I would have bet money that I just saw Winston's tail He's not anywhere around here. Did I see a ghost of a cat tail? Anyway, you can probably hear lots of noises. All of my windows are open, it's nice out, and I wanted them open. So I made it 51% into Camp Slaughter and I am going to DNF. I was enjoying it, but I was having some issues with it. I know I talked to you about the whole character thing. And then I started having a lot of issues because the villain in here, the cannibal bad guy, we get his perspective and I'm just like getting weird feelings because he has a low IQ and that's like part of the whole thing. Like his IQ and his mental capabilities, I don't know, It's it just like makes me feel weird especially because they're portraying him as not being able to like form full sentences but then he can do these super complex things that only have to do with the like the cannibal stuff and all of this and I don't know it just like I'm not specifically saying that it is like bad representation or anything but it made me feel weird so like I personally just am not gonna read it anymore and that combined with like the whole issue I had with the characters it was just too much for me um, also, there is, like, some weird stuff about him, like, having these, like, terrible nightmares about his mom having sex. And, like, that apparently is, like, a common thing that happens in horror books. Like, maybe older ones. I don't know. But, like, just because it happens doesn't mean I think it's good or necessary. Like, there are just so many weird vibes I was getting from this book. So, I personally 
do not recommend it. Um, I didn't finish it, but I looked at some reviews and like, I don't think it would have been one that I would have ended up really liking that much anyway. So that is a DNF. I have now started The Lost Village, and of course I don't know where my book is. It's not this book that's here. I think it's upstairs. I hurt my back, and I've just been having a day where I kind of lay in bed. Oh, also, the documentary crew did not really come back in to play before I decided to stop. Every once in a while we got their perspective, and it might have become a bigger thing later on, but I just didn't get to that point. So, so sorry. It could have been a cool aspect to this book, but I didn't get there. Okay, The Lost Village. I don't know where my copy is. I think I left it upstairs. My back has been bothering me. What was I saying? God, I'm so tired. So, I made it 40%. I had to run some errands this morning. I had to pick up groceries, go to the post office, go to the library, go to Duncan. <laughs> Um, it was clearly did not help because like I've been so tired all day. It's ridiculous. And I had Patreon sprints with Sav and that was fun. So during that I got to 40%. And this for sure is back to following the documentary crew like extensively. Um, so we are getting two timelines of then and then now. And we in the now are following a crew who is going to a lost village. Um, there was a situation in the past where all 900, I believe, of the town members just disappeared except for a baby. And then the baby happens to be the mother of someone who's on the crew. They all have connections to each other. Um, so they are going to document and investigate. Um, there's some creepy things that start to happen. And then in the past, we are learning how this situation um, ends up happening I'm assuming. A lot of it is pointing to this like religious church thing so there's gonna be some things with that. This is a very slow start. I'm not bored by it but also like really not a lot has happened. There was one moment where like a thing happened and then like there are like some subtle creepy things and a lot of it's just like setting up the setting and the atmosphere and the backstory and everything. Um, so it's feeling like three to four stars for me right now. Um, I don't think at 40% in it could end up getting five stars just because um, the pacing seems pretty slow. But like also some books are just slow. My issue is whenever it's like extremely slow and I don't care and then it like picks up pace like very quickly at the end. And like obviously I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't really have any complaints. I think it's interesting enough that I'm not bored. But also like it's just slow and how many times can I say not a lot has happened. My brain is not at full capacity today, so I might listen to more of this. I might not. I'm kind of just having a day where I don't do a lot. So I'll probably talk to you again tomorrow, even if I do read some more today. So I'll see you then. I have finished The Lost Village by Camilla Sten. St St the audiobook said like Stan or something. Um, this is translated which is very cool. The sad thing is that I did not like this book. Um, I think it was incredibly boring. It was way too slow paced for me. I think there were some interesting things that were happening, but there were very few, far, few and few and far between, far and few between. Are those even the right words? I don't know. I also did not like the mental health rep in here. There is a character who was on medication for something with her mental health. I can't remember what it is. And then she gets hurt. And then she stops taking her meds because she doesn't want the Tylenol to interact with it. And then things start happening and everyone immediately accuses her of being crazy because she's off her meds. Um, with no real proof. There is at least a character that does defend her, but didn't, didn't love that. So, um, two stars are because this was really boring for me. The documentary aspect of this does not really come back into play because there's just other things going on and there's like a mention of oh like the documentary could have like been incredible if whatever and whatever but I just <laughs> um so I don't have anything else to say about this I found it incredibly boring I have heard that her book after this is better so maybe I will pick it up in the future but I'm not rushing to get there. So to recap this video I read episode 13 by Craig DeLouis. I gave this four stars but really for me it was a three star story 
four stars was for the audiobook. This by far is the most documentary focused the entire time. It is a huge plot point. It is like the thing in the story. Um, so if you're looking for a documentary horror, I would suggest this one. Um, I didn't love the story, but I know a lot of people have. But for sure, for sure, pick up the audiobook. Then I attempted to read Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez, and I made it 50% into this, and I DNF'd it. I did not like the mental health rep in here, and it was just giving me, like, really weird vibes, and I was like, mm, no. And I don't remember if I told you, but I did look up spoilers and I'm, I'm glad I DNF'd it personally. So I don't know if I will be reading more from this author because I didn't love The Visitor, which I have read as well. But this one is not very documentary focused. I told somebody that I was reading it and they were like, that's part of that book. Um, Yeah, it's actually, I think the synopsis mentions them more than the other people. Where I stopped the documentary part was not a main focus. It was like, because there were so many characters, the focus was on this person and then this person and then this person and then this person. And like, we didn't even get back to the documentary part more than once or twice in the 50%. And I don't know what happened to them at the end. It could have been a bigger part, but I didn't get there. Yeah, didn't love the mental health rep. I didn't love the how the characters were done. Like, there were too many and I was confused and didn't think any of them were, like, distinguishable enough for me to care. So, DNF that. And then two stars for The Lost Village because this was very boring. And the documentary stuff in here is a pretty decent portion. It, like, very much drives the plot. Um, but then things happen and it does not become the main focus anymore. So those are the three documentary horror books that I read for this video. If you have any recommendations for documentary horror, I would love to hear them. I think it's a really interesting aspect. Um, I have read Road of Bones by Christopher Golden and I enjoyed certain parts of that. That one was three stars for me. So that's another one I can think of. Another one is From Below by Darcy Coates. That one is my personal favorite out of the documentary horror that I've read that I can think of right now. So yeah, if you have any recommendations, let me know. Also, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. If you made it to the end of this video and want to leave me an emoji, you could leave me a hand emoji for the hand in the window on this cover. If you are looking to find me in other places on the internet, everything is linked in the description, including my bookstagram, my storygraph, and my Patreon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!